Siri Pro features coming to WWDC. The Worldwide Developers Conference is an annual event where Apple showcases new software and technology. You can get all the details at apple.com. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. Guys, welcome to the All Future Podcast. We talk about all things in the future. And if you've been enjoying these videos, thanks a lot for subscribing. We really appreciate that. Appreciate the comments and interaction and everything. It's really cool. And if you haven't, eh, give us a, give us a shot here. Give us a shot here. If, if, if you want to hear uh, and be a part of a conversation about how this tech is affecting our lives and what's going on in the future, this is this is the place to be. You got you guys have hit the the algorithm has served you well today. <laughs> uh, so and especially. If you're in the Siri, if you're a Siri person, I will say during Ryan's intro there, we set off 47 Siri devices in this room. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> this might get kind of rough. Yeah, today. yeah. We, and that will probably continue to happen <laughs> as we talk about it. A few things going on mm -hmm. in the combination of what's going on with Siri and just how Siri-like things are starting to integrate into our lives with, with specific devices like the Humane Pen, for example. But beginning with Siri, they got this new thing Apple's been developing called Realm. I get. I assume you say it like the acronym there. I but think so. Yeah, yeah it uh, stands for Reference Resolution as Language Modeling. Exactly. Of course it does. What else would it possibly stand yeah, for? We all know that. Yeah. <laughs> so the, what's going on with this thing, Ryan? Why is it a, a cool version of AI? How's it going to make Siri better in theory? Yeah. So we've talked about this a little bit before, but essentially it understands context really well and the first thing it's doing is translating everything into text so that it's really easy for it to understand and then it can act quickly on things and some specifics are that it will understand ambiguous references to on-screen entities it'll also understand conversational and background context so we talked about this meaning for certain things like asking what song is this when you're out somewhere it would have already done this for you it would already have converted this to text it would already understand your surroundings a lot of more things can be done contextually based and it just improves a lot on previous voice assistants and Apple is directly working on this internally. Their researchers actually said being able to understand context, including references is essential for a conversational assistant, enabling the user to issue queries about what they see on their screen is a crucial step in ensuring a true hands-free experience in voice assistants. Great quote there. Uh, yeah, great. And I think this is what, what does AI need right now to, to be the effective, awesome virtual assistant thing that everyone wants. Mm -hmm. And one of those things is speed and on device stuff, right? Yeah. Like that, like, like that. Well, I guess on, that's part of the same problem, right? Like doing it on device in theory can make it faster. We don't have the computing power in most cases to do it on device. How can we just cut that supply chain down between when I ask something to when it gives me information? Mm -hmm. And how can we have AI? get better context. Yeah. That's really the magic of it. I'll give you guys an example. Just happened today. Show up here this morning, pretty excited to shoot, as I always am. <laughs> I can tell. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, Ryan's got everything in here just smart homed up. <laughs> so in his studio, <laughs> the lights go on, like every everything is set up just with voice commands. Ryan just made a new setup. So he changed the voice command, and I'll probably set off Siri saying this. Maybe if I give it a gap here. He said, Siri podcast. Who is speaking? Great. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it just set off Siri uh, around here. But his intention was to put the lights in the studio into. Hey, uh, hey Siri, stop. <laughs> this, this is the exact thing I'm talking about. Siri's going <laughs> off everywhere. Um, and his intention was to put the studio into the mode to do podcasting. Siri immediately started playing his last podcast. Yeah. <laughs> right? A, Good AI assistant is going to understand context and see, oh, Ryan is setting up a camera right now. He probably means that, oh, we should go into podcast mode and then do that. And in theory, what Realm is going to be able to do is something is looking around the room, a camera system or whatever, or maybe it's just considering the time of day, all these kinds of stuff, We're getting context that has been converted to text. So in Siri's little AI brain, it has written out, Ryan is standing by a camera. This is the time of day where they normally shoot the podcast. Ryan gives that command and it knows to put the lights on and mm -hmm. not just play a podcast like it did. Uh, that sounds great. Um, yeah. Hopefully that's where we can get to it. 
Um, we'll see. And, 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 you know, Apple's supposedly WWDC is going to start revealing some more of this AI stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe not with this yet. This seems like it's more in still this development kind of phase of everything. Well, wh where are you at with this, Ryan? Now, obviously, this is what we want, right? Like, but is how far away are we with this? And what is the kind of ideal version of this? Well, I think we're probably still... I don't know, maybe a couple years from this being truly just mm -hmm. second nature type of speaking back and forth. But seeing some developments here to where it's actually usable probably are on the horizon quickly, especially when you have Apple researchers directly talking about things um, about a true hands-free experience. Like mm -hmm. they're talking about something beyond device right there, mm -hmm. beyond a phone that you're inputting with. Mm -hmm. And I could see this. I just watched the movie Her. Excellent film. Great movie. A, a film we talk about often here. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's probably my third or fourth time seeing it, mm -hmm. but it's great every time. And I paid more attention to the background characters and mm -hmm. stuff because everyone is wearing these things mm -hmm. and everyone's engaging. But the back and forth with this character, obviously it turns into like this whole big love story and stuff, but it's just so immediate and so natural mm -hmm. the way it's asking him questions and learning about him and the emotion it has. So that's kind of where we want this to get. But in the immediate, we have version one, mm -hmm. which I think the very first version one is this humane pin. <laughs> Rough start. Yeah. Rough start. <laughs> and the funny thing is like in her, he has like he, uh, like a paper clip or whatever mm -hmm. it is, a clothespin keeping his pocket, his phone thing device mm -hmm. right here. And that's like the humane pin is like goes there and has a camera shooting out exactly the same way. Yeah. So I, the parallel is crazy, but the reviews are out on the humane pin and they are not pretty. As we suspected. When we were, I mean, every time we brought up the humane pin, we're like, this doesn't feel like it's there yet. Yeah. Uh, the general consistent, consensus with the reviews is great build quality, cool looking device, completely fails in what it is designed to do. Yeah. And that is really be that kind of her always on AI device that can help you with your life. It also it reminds me of the... Uh, Star Trek com badges, you know, it's like this mm -hmm. thing on your chest you can kind of press and it gives you access to all information and do all these things for you. In practice, brutally short yeah. <laughs> of where it needs to be. Uh, my favorite demo from uh, Marquez Brownlee, he literally talks about how this is the worst device he ever reviewed, which is, as a, he's a guy who's reviewed a lot of devices, so yeah. that's, pre that's a pretty uh, dubious honor to have. But he's outside, he's got the humane pin on him, he's in front of his cyber truck. This is probably the most like Marquez Brownlee thing you could be in front of a cyber truck doing a phone review or whatever. Yeah. Um, and he asked the humane pin, what is this? Which is, a, that's a cool demo because it needs context of what's going on, all these kind of things. So he asked it, what is this? Then he pulls out his phone. He goes to Google Lens, takes a picture of the cyber truck. The results come up in Google Lens saying it's a cyber truck puts the phone back in his pocket, then all of a sudden the humane pin actually lights up and starts giving him the answer. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice this in all the review videos on it. The delay is an unacceptable level of delay for what you want in this kind of device. The whole selling point of this thing is that it's immediate and always on and can be there to help me. And this makes it so where it is convenient and more faster to grab another device. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's expensive. It's yeah. it's six hundred ninety nine dollars, and then it's twenty four dollars a month because you have to have a data plan dedicated to it. And that's just one model of it. If you want the different colors, it's another hundred bucks. Oh, really? So, yeah. yeah. So it's even more than that. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of exactly what we expected. I think mm -hmm. it's like one. All the features here can be an app, and actually are an app, and are already better, <laughs> and already faster. You know, it's cool because it's right here. It's easier than pulling out your phone. But even pulling out your phone is faster and easier at this point than this version one is. So I do hope that we see big improvements with this. I do appreciate a product coming to market yeah. for a new thing and actually getting out there and proving that it can have the form factor, but it sucks at first. But <laughs> we just got to start. Mm -hmm. um, some people would say that about the Apple Vision is sure. kind of that way. It's like that they're at least they're putting out this crazy high end headset, even though it's missing things that people want mm -hmm. and so i love seeing that it's actually out but yeah it, it's unfortunately what we expected and, and what i would argue the difference between this and say the apple vision and, is that the apple vision while maybe has some some functionalities and apps we'd like to see the things that apple said it would do it nails mm -hmm. you know like it's really great at doing the things that apple said hey you can do this with it it's true and boom nails it this this the humane pin 
is bad at doing the stuff that they said it's for. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like, it's like, hey, like, it's not like we're trying to, like, people out there are trying to like find weird, you know, fringe use cases and kind of break it or something. They're like, oh, I'm doing what's in the demo video yeah. and it's bad at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll see some like big software improvements there. But the other big thing with it and that we're going to see with all these other ones coming out is just the ecosystem. Mm. So it doesn't have an ecosystem. So it yep. doesn't talk to the things that you're already connected with and you already like. And that's something we could see maybe Apple or then on the other side, Samsung or someone do with this in the future because there's other ones coming up and they're going to be cool and they have cool demos, Mm -hmm. but it's like, does it talk with everything that I already use? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a big part of the the whole transition to these AI devices. And that's why Apple, Google, Microsoft are going to be so far ahead of any of these kind of startup competitors Mm -hmm. is because one, they already have deals in place for the ecosystem. You know, they already have integration with apps. They, they just have, their arsenal is so much bigger than you would ever have as a startup. Like, how do you convince, and not, not saying human even wants to do this, but if they wanted to get someone to develop an app or a system for this thing, it's hard to convince people to get on board with this. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be fair to Humane, they kind of are an anti-app in a way. They're, they're, we've talked about this before on the podcast, this idea of the future of AI is really a post-app world because the AI does everything, so you don't need apps. But what you will need is still those integrations. You know, mm. it's still going to have to be able to interact with other digital products. And this thing just doesn't do that. Yeah. So the next one in line is the Rabbit R1. Oh, yeah. I think that's coming out any day now. I don't know the date, but I, I know it's really soon. <laughs> and Andrew actually has one ordered. So yeah. So we'll have one here on the podcast to uh, see, see how it works. I'm so. really excited to try that out. But they do have some demos there that people have shown off that are pretty impressive and give you this idea of what it could be in the future. And this one is showing like a Nest thermostat install, mm-hmm. which I actually totally did this same yeah. thing and had to look up the directions and yeah. everything. All the but, colored wires. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're just pointing it at it and it's telling it which wire goes into which port mm-hmm. and everything which is kind of cool i do have the question of like are they liable if you mess that up <laughs> um i don't know how that works because where is it pulling the information from I'm how, sure, I'm how sure could it get it wrong there's got to be some user agreement that you sign when you first yeah. start the device it's not like everything this says is a suggestion do mm-hmm. it at your own risk or whatever um, absolutely but that is a that's a cool ai use case right there multimodal ai use case because it's you know, it's seeing the image of the wires. It's explaining what each wire is, where it goes. That's kind of cool. I, I actually like that demo a lot mm-hmm. um, because that shows that is eliminating steps for me. Yeah. Because it's, I got to look up a thing, Google it. And what's cool about the AI is that it, it even it was in this particular demo, it explained what different wires are. It's like, oh, the, the C wire is a common wire. It's powering your thermostat. This is the fan. The G wire is the fan wire, all these kind of things um, that I just had to learn through <laughs> just looking up stuff. Just I was curious about what they all were, right? And having it all just happen for you in a way in a device that you can talk to and interact with, that's super cool. This mm-hmm. is, this is to me, this was a great AI use case. I'm not sure it's a great rabbit AI use case because yeah. why, again, this feels like it could be just an app on my phone. What is the standalone device giving me that I don't have somewhere else? But still very cool. Yeah. So that is the overarching problem with all these devices, I think, is that thing we've talked about like long term having a dedicated device is very cool but for now it kind of seems like apple is just going to be building most of this into their phones and we'll probably see some of this demoed at wwdc Mm because they're investing huge amounts into ai right now it's very Mm -hmm. clear Mm -hmm. they've bought over 33 companies now Mm -hmm. i'd love to see the tally there it's probably (laughs) going up every day yeah and they're making all these AI partnerships. We talked a little bit about Gemini mm-hmm. before. That seems like their partnership for out of device stuff mm-hmm. is going to be with Google Gemini. So a lot of these features are on the horizon here. Yeah, like you're saying, everything is, is going to work better with the phone, with these big companies, Google or Apple or whoever. But I could see we t- another thing we talk about a lot is proprietary AI models. And let's just keep using the example of the thermostat thing. I could see someone making a device that is, oh, I'm a construction AI or I'm a home improvement AI. And my device is doing a lot of onboard AI. So it's loaded up with, because it's easier to make an onboard AI if you kind of niche down on it, right? Make it Mm. just focus on one particular thing. Maybe you make the form factor so that it works better in that kind of environment. So in a construction environment, it's in some kind of 
rugged casing or something like that or yeah. has some kind of like snake end on it so it can go around corners and look at stuff. This is where you can actually start making cool standalone AI stuff is when you start to get these hyper-focused cases. But for the average person, right, like I, it's going to be hard to sell people on a dedicated AI device. Yeah, absolutely. So with that said, some of these features that we could see at WWDC, I think we could definitely call it Siri Pro. I mean, Apple brands everything pro, and I think this is going to really take Siri to the next level, hopefully, to where we don't have the things like we were talking about earlier. And some of the things I'd love to see are just being able to make replies, but give it specific multimodal steps, mm -hmm. you know, like we've talked about. So sending, send this file to this person or go to this website, download the most recent this, and mm -hmm. I don't know, upload it somewhere else for me. All of that kind of stuff. Well, yes. Like uh, that's a real assistant, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, like not just a thing that can turn on the lights for me or mm -hmm. tell me the weather, but a thing that is much more integrated into my life and can execute on things. That's yeah. really the jump is that can this thing execute stuff? Mm -hmm. And that is the thing like go, go on Amazon, order this, right? Like that, that kind of thing, that'd be, that's cool. That's, that's where we need to get to. And, I, and this is coming, I think. And I think Apple's going to demo some kind of version of that probably at WWDC, maybe later. You could, you could also argue that maybe they will hold back some kind of improved Siri reveal for some kind of new HomePod model. Um, because, you know, just talking about Siri at WWDC, I mean, you could talk, maybe they can bring up, oh, we've got a new API for AI Siri and it'll integrate more stuff in it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be great if we do stuff at WWC, but maybe it, they're going to hold it to pair with a product. But yeah, like this, this, this is the dream. This is what people have always wanted with this thing. Uh, and it's so close now. So it's just really how, what's that implementation going to be? Mm -hmm. For that implementation, I'm really curious. Are we training these things? Is it like we have an advanced shortcuts app that can mm -hmm. do things system wide? In any app, it doesn't have to be like this app supports Siri shortcuts. It's like you can teach it how to do anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe even just like a record, like record this function and you go through the steps of ordering the pizza that you mm -hmm. always want to order. <laughs> and then it has, has that learned. Mm -hmm. And then you tell Siri to do that and bam, it proceeds with that whole thing for you. Or yeah, how else is gonna, is yeah. it gonna learn from us or general? I think it's probably a combination of those things. I could also see app, I've talked about this before, app developers, including uh, AI teaching tools within the app, whether it's an actual full AI agent or just some kind of thing that trains uh, AI or virtual assistant, whatever you want to call it, to use that app. So it just comes with the download. It's kind of seamless to the user mm -hmm. because it's all these things have been just explained when the app download happens to the AI. You could also do what you're talking about, the training thing where you, sh you could just make it a command like Siri, watch this. And then you do a thing and mm -hmm. you go, did you understand that? And it's like, yeah, sure. I got it. And then, and then it can do that in the future. We did see a device that does this. It was called the O one something. Oh, one. Mm -hmm. I forgot what this thing was called. It's some kind of little puck kind of AI thing. Um, there was the idea that you can train it on apps and mm -hmm. it can learn. So I feel like all these things are coming right? <laughs> because, because you're going to have cases where, yeah, you're literally going to need to just explain to Siri what you're doing. And mm -hmm. then it goes, okay, got it. Which yeah, would be awesome. Absolutely. So it seems like for the immediate future, we're gonna have probably most of these features coming to customers in usable ways in integrations on our smartphones we already have. But long-term, I think something like the Humane Pin might be the new form factor. It's just, it's gotta be version 12 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward at uh, Humane Pin version 12, uh, 2040 or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely. But in the meantime, we'll have some new features coming at WWDC. See you guys then.